Our universe is a big place. There are approximately 100 billion galaxies as big as the Milky Way. If you step on planet Earth and our 6.5 billion people who live here, it's easy to feel small. Nashville, where we live, is a growing city. And yet there are over 160 cities in China alone that are the same size or bigger. This is a time of year. Lots of people feel the weight of being alone being isolated, a feeling like no one cares, and yet the story that we've been telling for 2,000 years somehow works its magic to speak into this feeling of deep, deep loneliness. I love how C.S. Lewis says this. He says the whole story, the whole plot, it moves to a point, to a tiny point, the point of a spear, a Jewish girl and her prayers. You are small, but you are not insignificant. Let me prove that to you by telling you two stories. The first story is about rich magi. The second story is about poor shepherds. We tend to ignore the story about the magi. Now Torah tells us that astronomy is forbidden. But God shows us that He loves the astronomer more than He does what the astronomer does for a living. Because He sends a message through the universe that something is going down on earth. And the astronomers believe that the, that the things of heaven are connected to the things of earth. That you can't separate those two. So God brings the Magi into the story. And there's tension, there's drama, there's fear, there's a showdown. Because when the Magi get to Jerusalem, they meet the current king. And the irony in the story is stark. They go to the old king to find out about the new king. The problem is the old king has no plans of resigning or retirement. So they ask the old king about the new king. The new king, Herod, is afraid, but he pretends like he's not. And he makes a deal with the Magi. He says, when you find this kid, this new king, let me know so I too can worship him. So the Magi, they strike a deal. They travel outside of Jerusalem, just a few miles to Bethlehem. They find the baby Jesus. They lay themselves before his parents. They offer gifts of great value and pay homage to the one who caused the heavens and the earth to change. They snub Herod, the powerful ruler, and it sets off a genocide that Jewish mothers still to this day mourn. There's an artist in Bethlehem today who's crafted the nativity scene. His scene has the usual players. It has Joseph and Mary and the angels and donkeys and troughs and all the normal things that we think of when we see a nativity scene. But he's added one important feature that many people overlook. Between Jesus and the Magi, this carver has constructed a wall. When asked about this wall, he said it was a reminder of the wall that the Israeli government built in 2002 to separate Jews in Bethlehem from Palestinians. If you stand on the inside of the wall, the inside of the wall says, peace be with you, the peace of God in several different languages. On the outside, there's all kinds of satirical commentary about the role of the wall because the wall influences the way you see the world. If you're on the inside of the wall, you feel peace and safety and comfort. If you're on the outside of the wall, you feel tension and isolation. This artist designed the wall in such a way in his nativity scene that it can be removed, reminding those of us 2,000 years later of the walls that Jesus tore down that evening in Bethlehem. In the Gospel of Luke, the shepherds are the new magi. They're the outsiders. The magi in Matthew are rich, powerful, educated, and elite. The shepherds in Luke are poor, so God speaks through angels to these shepherds. He speaks a powerful word. When you follow the shepherds, you ask the question, are they traveling the same path that the Magi traveled to see this baby? As soon as the angels speak this word of declaration, they drop what they're doing. They get to Jesus as fast as they can and they worship the baby. 
just as the Magi worship. And we get this picture of what human existence can be. God brings the outsiders to the inside of the story. So for all the ways you might find yourself on the outside, this story is inviting you to see the world as it actually is in the life of Jesus, not as we pretend it to be in our lives. Christmas Eve, 1906, small town, Massachusetts. The first successful radio broadcast in human history was experienced by sailors. A Canadian scientist played O Holy Night while reading from Matthew and Luke's account of the birth of Jesus. The sailors were surprised not only to hear a human voice and a violin, but to hear the story of Jesus' birth through a medium they had never experienced. See, even 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus, God, through the Gospel, was doing what God does. He was tearing down walls. He was bringing people who were alone on the outside into the middle, into the center of the story. He didn't do it to preachers or politicians or celebrities. He spoke to sailors. That is the music of the Gospel. It's the sweetest song that's ever been sung.